Good morning, everybody. I'm gonna, we're going to first uh, take questions related to the um, decision with Metro Nashville Schools, and then if you have something else, we'll go to that. But first, uh, we'll go ahead and address that. Well, let me just start off by saying this was not a decision that anybody at the state takes any pleasure in. Um, but we also think that uh, we are a state of, of laws. And when uh, state law is, uh, is violated uh, really on a decision not once but twice after proper warning from not only us as the state but from the board's own attorney, we felt like it was very important to act. To act. Uh, because of that, we took an, an action that uh, dealt with the state withholding Three point, uh, approximately $3.4 million of the state-funded BEP portion as it relates to administrative costs so that it would, um, uh, as much as possible, minimize any effect on the classroom. And again, we don't do this with any sense of uh, trying to use the state's uh, power in any way, but like any other state law that the General Assembly passes, we're responsible for enforcing that law, and that's why we took this action. Governor, about a month ago, you said you didn't want, you weren't going to do this, and yet here we are. No, what I said is that the state is about. Uh, we're first and foremost about educating children, and I assumed that the Metro School Board would see things the same way. And when the second time, when they made a decision, again, when their own attorney says, "Hey, on a scale of one to ten, this is about a nine or ten in, cert in terms of certainty." Uh, when their own attorney tells them that, that they're violating state law, we can't just stand back. So we did come up with a, uh, our action, like I said, addressed as much as possible, keeping it away from the students. Besides monetary action, were there any other options discussed by the state in terms of, uh, I guess, punishment for MPS? Well, I think we talked about certain things. I'll let the commissioner uh, comment if he would like to. I think we felt like this was the most, you know, Obviously, this is both a local issue and a state issue because education is funded by locals and by the state. Uh, and we felt like uh, this was a place where the state had uh, some very direct input into the school system. And Kevin, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Oh, well, Commissioner, I have a question, if you don't mind. Uh, did you speak directly with Dr. Register and kind of how, run me through the process of letting Metro know what you were going to do? In terms of the action this morning, I have not or talked the, to Dr. Register. Or, or the action in itself, or whomever you well, spoke with. Well, following the first time, when they disobeyed the law the first time, we had a meeting with Dr. Register and his staff, and we were quite clear about what the possible outcomes would be if the law was violated again. How did you, how Governor, did you is this a... $3.4 million, is that just an arbitrary number? I mean, how did you get to that specific number, and why was yeah. that? It's next month's work the administrative cost for the BEP. So we, we fund for the BDP on a monthly basis, 10 months of the year, and it's next month's administrative portion of the cost. Uh, given that, you know, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's not, the, it's the administrative portion, but this could possibly lead to layoffs or something like that. Is that, you know, is that an effective way of, you know, teaching Metro schools, the Metro School Board a lesson? Well, I don't think we're trying to teach Metro School Board a lesson. And, you know, Metro number of administrative costs. We hope that they'll make decisions wisely about how they spend their money. Andy, this, let me go to Andy. I mean, yeah. is this not sort of a shot across the bow of all school boards in Tennessee and that they're going to be, uh, you know, held to these same standards and face being penalized, uh, and, you know, penalized financially if they don't go along with state control? It's not me. Well, again, uh, this, is, uh, this is an issue. The General Assembly passed a law in terms of how the process works. The process was followed. The State Board of Education ruled. Uh, and again, it was pretty clear legally, even their own attorney said this was real clear. It's a question of should we as the state then totally ignore when the law is violated? And I think that's what the citizens of the state, that they put us in place to make certain that when laws are violated that there's, there's, a, there's reaction to that. that. That's what we do in a, any, number of, any number of laws. Can so you tell us should. where you're authorized to withhold funding because they broke the law? That work. Yeah, it's in the letter that we sent out this morning. So you can look at the Tennessee Code section that's stated in the letter. Governor, does your uh, administration support a statewide charter authorized over the next legislative session? We, we, we haven't previously pushed for that, and I, uh, you know, I think you've heard the commissioner say that that would be an uphill fight. And I think prior to this, it probably, I, I don't think there was a lot of political momentum around it. We'll have to see what the General Assembly, uh, how how they react to that this year, but. Um, Prior to this, you know, there was that was not something that was on our agenda at all. Seems like well, is it on your agenda now? Uh, 
I, right. At, at this point in time, uh, like I said, we haven't finalized the legislative agenda for next year. Uh, Commissioner, there was a public records request a couple of weeks ago, and it kind of seemed to see, say that you were, you've kind of been behind in supporting Great Hearts the entire time. You know, why, why did you feel so strongly about this particular charter school when the district did not? Well, first of all, again, I'd say today is about state law. It's sort of irrelevant what the school is or what the law is. You've got to follow the law. And when a state board decides we're just going to violate the law because we feel like it, that's when we have to take action. So that's what this is about. In terms of Great Hearts itself, as with all schools in Tennessee, part of my job is to make sure that we have good, high-quality schools for kids in Tennessee, period. Without, without overstating the obvious, and this is boiling down to the classic battle of local versus state control, whoever else would like to respond to that? Well, I, I will because, and like I said, I, I've been very adamant that I believe in local, I've been a mayor, I believe strongly in local decision making, but education is an area where we are joint funders. We are joint, um, we, we make, there are certain decisions that, that are both state and local government are constitutionally, uh, you know, in charge of. And in this case, you had a very clear state law passed. Uh, the state is a major funder of education, and the law was not followed. Uh, Representative Harwell, you represent a good hunk of this uh, you know, area in question, if not all of it. And uh, last week you talked about it a little bit, that hoping it would be worked out. It hasn't been worked out really, has it? Well, no, and I, I will echo the fact that I'm very disappointed in our local school board's decision. Um, I would expect them to comply with the letter of the law, uh, the state law. Um, I think the public demands nothing less. And more important than all of this is the question of what is best for the students here in Metro Nashville. And largely I am hearing from the public that they want choice for their schools. This was one avenue of choice that they would like to have seen in West Nashville. And I'm disappointed that the children of the state are not going to be able to participate in a public school charter that, quite frankly, has had a tremendous amount of success in other states. Is there, a way, is there a way out of this for Metro? I mean, and have you had any conversations with Metro about, you know, what has, what has happened here in the last 24 hours or this morning? Well, certainly we want to look for a way for this to be successful. Um, because the bottom line always is, how do we best needs, meet the needs of the children of the state? And um, so I think everyone at the state level wants to work with local government uh, to make, uh, have us have the best educational system that we can. We have a mayor in this city that is determined to improve the educational output of our children in Metro Nashville, and I support the mayor and what he's attempting to do. And Commissioner Huffman, if you could go over the mechanics of this, this is essentially one month is that the, the, figure, the amount of money you had mentioned and kind of the, when will they see the impact of the loss of this money? Yeah, in the October payment, which is in the middle of October, it's one month's administrative loss. Is it possible it might continue oh, in future months? Uh, Commissioner, can you step kind of in the middle so <laughs> our camera people are, like, Thank you. are really having yeah, a hard time they're here. They're moving back and forth <laughs> and we're trying to. Uh, that it would continue, meaning that there would be additional withholding? Yes. No. Commissioner, do you worry what this dispute has done in terms of the long-term relationship between the, specifically in schools here, the state of Tennessee and the second largest school district in, in the state? I mean, how do you move forward from this and work on other issues after this dispute? And, and, the, and the, it seems like it's taking a toll on this relationship there. Well, we're going to continue to focus on what's in the best interest of students, and my operating assumption is Metro National Public Schools will as well. As we have one or two on this topic. I just have one quick follow-up. Uh, I mean, this whole issue appears to come down in Nashville to, to a provision in state law that, that says that the, you know, that the charter schools are now open up to well-performing students from higher incomes and that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, it appears that this, I mean, this is being shoved down the throats of local school systems, which I think it objected to it, but I mean, is that not the case, and how, how do things go forward from here? No, I view this as, as not about that law. It's about the law on how charters get authorized and what the authority is of the State Board of Education. And the law is clear, regardless of the open enrollment policy, that when you have a charter uh, appeal that's granted by the State Board of Education, as this one was, 9-0 to zero by a bipartisan board representing the entire state, including Nashville, that 
the next action step is that the local board is supposed to approve the charter. So this is about the appeals process and about what the state law says about that. Commissioner, do you think this will prevent other school boards from trying this? From trying what? From tri violating the law? Yes, from uh, going against the State Board of Education. Well, I, I mean, I think the good news is I haven't seen any signs that other school boards want to just violate the laws. So this has been a surprise to all of us. Do you share, you know, one of the, re I mean, it wasn't only the old school board that said no to this, it was the new school board as well. They cited diversity, tr you know, s certain concerns. Do you, does, do you not share those same concerns that those members cited? Well, the State Board of Education held a hearing, looked at the charter, looked at the concerns in question, and voted 9 to 0. And so that's been vetted, and it's not a question of whether I share those concerns or what I think about this. It's a question of following the law and what the state board says. Commissioner, you all don't see any conflict, Governor, also because of those emails that were released to the public. Obviously, you all were, were big supporters of Great Hearts. You don't see any conflict of interest there? No. Yeah, and, no and again, it comes back to there's a state law. And we have a responsibility to make sure that state law is followed. It's really clear, like I said, as Kevin said, when the state board votes nine to zero, and that's not a board that has been totally appointed by me, it's been bipartisan appointed. They represent the entire state nine to zero. When the local school board's own attorney says this is a fairly open and shut case, I, I don't think that we were left with a choice but to react. Governor, Governor were you in on the withholding the well, BEP go funds? Yeah. Go, were go ahead, were yeah. you in on the decision to withhold the BEP funds? I was. Commissioner uh, Huffman brought the, uh, when we had talked about what to, how to react to this, and Commissioner Huffman brought that idea, and, and I definitely approved that. Guys, yeah, we can take maybe one or two yeah. other questions. But then, yeah. where, where are things in terms of a special Supreme Court? I think we talked a yeah. week, more than a week ago, yeah. and you were saying a week yeah, or so. Yeah, I apologize. And I was hoping I, I was gone to Japan last week, and uh, it delayed the process a little bit. We're in the process now of checking uh, backgrounds and people's willingness to serve. Hopefully we're just days away. I, probably, I did say a week, more than a week ago, but being in Japan slowed me down. Uh, the T3 project, um, you know, it's a lot of money that's being spent to consolidate right.